Morning, Purcell Church family. Um, I believe it's February 10th, Wednesday morning. We're Word Up Wednesday. Uh, let's open in prayer. God, we pray that as we spend our time focusing on you this morning, that you would give us your peace, your patience, and your guidance as we enter our day. In all these things we pray in your Son's name. Amen. So this morning I'm pulling out of 1 Corinthians 12. The whole verse is 4 through 27. That's all in context. But I'm kind of going to skip around. I'm going to read some um, out of uh, 4, 5, and 6, and then jump down to 12 and 15. And um, so we're, I'm going to jump around as I read, but it, the whole thing for context is 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 27. Uh, and this is all about gifts. And I kind of feel that this is important. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Jump down to verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Jump down to verse 15. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices. Verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We recently had somebody come to our church and say that it was like meeting celebrities when he when he met us. And and I get the idea. I get what he was saying. And and I'm I'm not picking on him at all, but it was it was just the way he said it that it was like meeting celebrities and because he'd see, he'd only seen us on TV, it was the first time meeting us. He's not like most of our church family where yeah, you know who I am and you just happen to be interacting through a screen at the current moment because well, because 2020 and 2021. Um, but I just couldn't shake the idea that in his mind it made us special or unique or more important. And, and that was one thing that just kind of stuck with me. And it's been shoot, several weeks since I've met him. But it just always stuck in the back of my head. And it was this idea that because we were on TV that we were special. But... What this verse says is that everybody, every part of the body is special. and Every part of the body has its purpose. And there is no more important people or less important people in the body of Christ, for we are all part of one body, and we all have a part to play. And you can come up with all the, oh, well, I don't do so much because I can't sing on stage, or I can only do such and such, and I can't do such and such. But if faith like a mustard seed matters, then any act of faith as small as whatever you can do matters. If God can take the loaves and the fish and feed the 5,000, then God can take your small act of kindness in his name and multiply it until it changes someone's world. We're going to read James 2, 
verses 8 through 9. I've been reading a lot in James here lately. Um, if you really keep the royal law found in scriptures, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. In other words, there's no favorites when it comes to the body of Christ. Um, going back a couple weeks, I was walking around church before church started, and uh, I was thinking about gifts, because uh, obviously I'm on stage, and so I get to use my gifts very publicly. Um, and not that that's better or worse, it's just the gifts I was given. But I got this image of a big U. Um, and it... And it kind of changed the way I thought about things. Um, but I view gifts in the shape of a U, that we are each given some gifts, so they come from heaven and come down to us. And the only way God can give us more is if we are faithful with that gift. And, and faithful with that gift sounds really churchy, but what about if I said you just need to use that gift to bring positive attention to God and no attention to yourself? That's where the you comes in. So God gives us the gift. So the gift comes down. And then we in turn give God the glory. And the gift goes back up. The reason it's not a circle is because God's not required to give us anything. It's his choice and it's his grace that he gives us the gifts for his glory. There is no point anywhere in the story of the Bible where God owes us anything. If we are owed anything from God, it is isolation and banishment. Because he cannot be in the presence of sin, and we are filthy, sinful creatures. But here comes God giving out that greater grace, that overwhelming grace that covers all our sins and covers us in his righteousness, making us as righteous as him. Church, we all have gifts and talents. Some of them are public, and some of them are just between two people, and those are just as important. There is no greater gifts. There is no greater blessing. Today, our prayer, I hope that you would take some time in prayer and that you would seek God to find out what your gifts are. And if you know what your gifts are, that you would seek God on how to greater use your gifts for his glory. God, we pray that as we go throughout our day that we would return our gifts to you. God, that we would use them for only your glory and none of the glory to ourselves. It's in your son's name we pray. Good day, church.